Low key, this literally might be my new favorite feature of iOS 15. Did you know that you can create like background noise or, or white noise to play from your phone without downloading an additional app? <laughs> I know. I'm still amazed that you can just swipe down from your control center, tap on this ear, and then tell it to turn background sounds on. Apple is really on their Zen mode. Now this is just one of the tips that we're gonna be getting today. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. Y'all, I know I'm still stuck on the fact that that is in iOS 15, like, why is no one talking about this? Why is Apple not talking about this? Like, all the people that do yoga, meditation, are those that just could benefit from some like, you know, background noise that's not background noise when you're working, you know? So in essence, what that feature does is it helps create something like white noise to mask unwanted environmental noise. All right, so let, let's talk about how you can get this set up. So you're gonna go to your settings, and then we're going to search for background sounds. Okay, once you're in here, you're gonna tap on it. And this is where you will enable it. So you're gonna wanna make sure that's turned on if it's not currently. And this is where you can come in, you know, play with the different sounds. So you got balance noise. It's the rain for me. Rain down on me. Anyway, um, <laughs> I didn't know I was talented like that, did you? But okay, um, but no, for real though, rain is probably my favorite one out of the selection here. It's just so calming. And I'm finding myself like <laughs> putting this on now in place of my music because I'm always playing music. But now I put on background sounds and I just absolutely love this. You can even customize it further down here. You can have it stop when you lock your phone. But the way that you get it in your control center, you're gonna wanna go back into your settings and we're gonna go to the search option here and we're gonna search for control center. Then once you're in here, you're gonna go down to, where is it at, hearing and you're gonna hit the plus symbol, and now it should be in your control center. So I'm gonna just slide down, and voila, it's there. <laughs> I love, love, love this. Now this next one here is something that, I don't even know why it wasn't on iOS 14, but thank God it is now on iOS 15, and that is the ability to rearrange and delete your home screens. So if you didn't know, you can customize your home screens. So if you take your finger here and you long press on these three dots, and then you tap on them, It'll let you look at all of your home screens and you can tap one to hide it. Or if you want, you can hit the minus symbol on one to completely remove it. So I'm gonna do that one right here. Or if you press and hold, you can rearrange them. Do you know <laughs> the amount of work I put in to get my first page as my second page? You know, it's, it was a process, so I'm glad to see this is here because it can now simplify things for me, especially because I love to customize my screen. And speaking of, I'm gonna be doing a video regarding what's on my iPhone. So if you're curious about my setup, you can feel free to hit that subscribe button down below and the like button if you feel inclined to. Okay, so this one right here is one of those things that I think is a small change that can make a huge impact. And that's tap to undo. Because right now when you know you type in something and you make a mistake, you have to basically, you know, shake your device to get the option to undo. That's annoying. So all you gotta do is take three fingers and tap once. And you're gonna get this menu up here and you can just hit undo. Now, if I made more than, you know, just more words and stuff like that, I could just tap with three fingers again and It'll keep undoing, you know, till we get back to the original point. You can also redo, cut, copy, and paste. Or if you want to, you can take three fingers and tap twice, and it'll undo what you just did. Now this is an even easier way to remove songs from playlist. You can just force press on it, and now you have a remove from playlist option. Because before that, you either had to tap these three dots, or you had to swipe on the song to delete it. Rain notifications. It's the worst when you're stuck out there without an umbrella. So let's change that by going into the weather app and making sure you get alerts 
when it's about to rain. So once you're in here, you're gonna tap these three dots in the top right, and we're gonna go down to notifications. And then once you're in here, you're gonna come and turn on each city that you wanna be able to get rain notifications for. And that's it. And I don't know if you know, but Safari now has extensions very much like it has on Mac. And the way that you can browse the extension store is to go into your settings, and we're gonna search for Safari. And then we're gonna navigate down to extensions, and then we're gonna go down here to where it says more extensions. Tap on it. And it's gonna take you to the area in the app store that has extensions on which you can download. Now let's talk a little bit about health data. So there's a new option with iOS 15 that allows you to share your health data. And I think this is gonna be a really great option, especially for those of you out there that might be monitoring the health of your parents or maybe you wanna keep an eye on your kids. This will help you do so. So let's say for instance, if their heart rate went up or if something irregular from their normal health status happens, you will be notified. So the way that you can set that up is to go into the health app And then once you're in there, you're gonna navigate over to sharing and you're gonna select share with someone. You can even share it with your doctor if you wanted to, but we're gonna tap share with someone and then you're gonna tap in who you wanna share it with. And then you can choose between getting help for suggested topics that you might wanna share or you can just manually choose them without any assistance, but I'm gonna go to see suggested topics and it just walks you through different things that you can enable. And then once you're done, you're just gonna hit share. And that's it. Interesting fact, you have a built-in receipt scanner on your phone. In order to access it, all you have to do is force press on your notes app, tap scan document, line up your receipt, snap a photo, and then save it. Now these receipts by default are gonna be saved in your notes app. I see this being real convenient, especially when you're like traveling for work and you just wanna kinda keep your receipts together and just organize them later. This is a quick way to grab your receipts and do just that. Now this one right here blew my mind. You can zoom in a FaceTime call. Uh, yeah, that's what I said. Watch. All right, so to access the zoom option, you're gonna tap on your little preview here and we're gonna tap on the effects icon. And now I can zoom in using my camera. Isn't that crazy? So this next tip right here will allow you to preserve your camera settings. So especially if you're always going into the camera app and you know having your little default things that you have to do all the time, you can stop doing that and go to your settings instead. And we're gonna search for camera. And then once you're in here, we're gonna to go to preserve settings and you can toggle certain things on or off that you want it to retain when you exit out of the camera app so that you don't have to make that adjustment again when you go back. This one right here, <laughs> y'all. Yeah, it, let me just show you. Did you know that you could take full page screenshots? Like, okay, so I'm gonna take a screenshot right now, y'all. You tap on the preview. I know I saw full page there all this time, but I never, <laughs> maybe it's just me. I never tapped on it. When I did, lo and behold, I can get a full page as the screenshot. <laughs> I was actually prior to this taking screenshots. And you, anyway, I'm just ashamed to say, but now I know you can tap full page, tap on done, and then save PDF to files and you know, so forth and so on in terms of saving it there and then you can share it, but like, <laughs> crazy man, I'm just. Okay, this one's nice too, y'all. So for those of you out there who don't like to delete your passes in your wallet app, you no longer have to have the long, you know, list of them within your wallet app. They're now grouped together at the bottom and you can just tap on it to reveal it and then tap on the individual pass to get the information on it. I know y'all, super convenient, cause. I don't like to delete my passes. Don't ask me why, I just don't. I just don't know if I might need to go back to it for something. I know I personally hated seeing all of those cards in there, especially when I'm trying to find like my boarding pass. So now I don't have to worry about that anymore. It just shows me the actual cards that are relevant right now and then the old ones are grouped together. Live text and lookup. So 
If you aren't familiar with Loptex, with iOS 15 now, you have a feature where you're gonna get this little icon in the bottom right of your phone when you're capturing a picture and your camera detects that text is in it. But you can access the little live text option to pull up your camera from just about anywhere in your phone that you can type in. So to access it, just long press in the area in which you want to type and then select the live text icon. Now, before we go any further, I do wanna take a quick moment to thank the sponsor for today's video, Keeper Security. Big thank you to them for supporting the channel and hooking your girl up with a way to keep her passwords safe. I'm a firm believer in using a password keeper, a password protected password keeper, and not just jotting down your passwords anywhere that seems convenient in the moment that someone can find. So it's with a password keeper like this that you can keep things nice and secure. So there are a couple of things that I really liked about Keeper Security. One being the layout is very clean and easy to follow. I also like the fact that they have different price packages so that way you can get the best one that's suited for you and your needs. You get unlimited password storage. And as far as security goes in terms of getting into the application, you can set it so that it uses your fingerprint or face ID. Plus on top of that, for all of my techies out there, this is you know, cross platform. So I know I'm between devices. So it's nice that this works not only with Android, but also iOS. And they also have a web platform. So even if you're away from your phones and you need to access your passwords, you can just hop onto the computer, sign into their website and access your information. Notification summary. It's another way in which Apple has allowed us to customize our experience when it comes to not being disturbed. So what notification summary does is it'll bundle non-urgent notifications for you so that you can receive them as a group summary at another time in the day. To access it, you would just hop into your settings and we're gonna search for notification summary. Or actually, it comes up here under scheduled summary. And you would just make sure that it's toggled on and then you can choose what time the first summary happens, second. And then if you go down here, you can just toggle on the apps in which you want those notifications for at that time. Ooh, this one right here. Ooh. Yeah, I definitely needed it and it's focus modes. <laughs> So this basically lets you create different modes or you can consider them like profiles almost, kind of. <laughs> that allows you to basically tailor what type of notifications you can receive when you're in that mode and even what home screen you'll be greeted with are just the home screen pages that you have access to in general. See, I set up the focus mode for recording so that when I'm recording, I don't get any notifications. And I like this because I can set the time to be like for one hour. And if I go to settings, I can customize things about this mode so that I can say, you know, what apps I do want to allow and how I want things to look for the recording button. And what do I want my lock screen to do? And what home screen do I want or what customizations do I want for my home screen from hiding notification badges to having a certain setup on my home screen when I record. So sometimes I honestly even use this just to create a quick theme so that I still get notifications in. but it'll give me a specific home screen layout. So for example, when I travel, I can force press here and then go to travel. And now my home screen is, you know, a certain setup for when I'm traveling. Because when I travel, I need quick access to certain apps. So that way they're right here when I need them. And then when I'm finished traveling, I can just go back. But it's a lot to break down in detail in this video, but I'm open to creating, you know, its own video. Just drop a comment down below and let me know. But basically when you're in focus mode, other people can see that you are in that mode. And this is an option that you do have to enable per person because it's not enabled by default. Now these focus modes, they can be accessed a couple of ways, either through your control center or your settings. But once you enable it, it's gonna hide your notifications. Now I really personally like this more than do not disturb because it takes it a step further. Like one thing I know do not disturb on iOS 14 did is basically ensure that your screen did not light up when a notification came in. However, I'm the type that when I go and wake my phone up and I see those notifications sitting there, it's hard for me not to interact with them. So it's like now with iOS 15, it puts an extra layer there for me and I need that layer. <laughs> I need that money. So that, you know, on those occasions when I do wake up my phone, maybe check the time or whatever, I don't see the notifications to possibly get distracted. But if you don't like that, you can customize it within your settings. And the other thing that I like is that you can enable it so that the focus mode is shared across all of your Apple devices. So you can't escape it by going to another one. And another thing I like is the fact that if you're in driving mode, you can have it auto reply to your favorites and not just anyone who messages you. 
you can make your modes as robust or as simple as you like. But yeah, that's gonna do it for this one, y'all. I do have some more videos rolling out. So I hope you stick around and check them out. But until they release, I'm gonna throw some on screen now that you're welcome to binge on. And um, till the next one, y'all, as always, thanks for taking the time out to let me tech you out.